All right, everybody. Good evening. Praise God. It's uh, 18 of. 18 of. 18 of. But Devora of over there at the olive trees, at the, at the fig tree, uh, she said they spotted the, the sliver of the moon at 7.03 p.m. there in Jerusalem and there's a bunch of people chasing the devil's moon those Muslims they they love that devil moon that's the devil's moon guys a sliver the slaughter moon Islam Satan you guys know that today is 18 of it is not one tishery I don't hear any trumpets a blowing. Like Ben said last night, I hear a lot of radio silence. And crickets. <laughs> radio silence and crickets. No trumpets. Hmm. Interesting. That hourly watch guy watch and pray that you be counted worthy man and I'm not setting a rapture date he says but the trumpets went off today at 7.03 and oh man we, we could be raptured in the next five days the Lord's not going to rapture us until a lul one or after there has to be a moon that fourth moon God ain't playing with that, dude. He is not playing with that fourth moon. That fourth moon is a humongous sign to the people that he loves. God the Father, his wife. That's a huge sign to her. He wants her saved. He wants to woo her back. Just like uh, Hosea did to Gomar. Okay? Hey, Bondo's here. He tells us, man, if you're going to be saved, if you're going to go to heaven, it ain't by praying to be counted worthy. It's by believing in your heart. You know that Jesus died for you. His death, burial, and resurrection paid your redemption price with his blood. We encourage you to read 10 to 20 chapters every day, guys. 10 to 20 chapters. 10 to 20 chapters. Wash. Renew your mind. It's obvious your pastors aren't doing this because your pastors are stupid. I'm going to encourage you guys to sit down with each other, the spouses, and determine whether or not you really need to go to what you call church tomorrow. We only have just a little while left, possibly less than two weeks. Two weeks from tomorrow night, or, or last night, two weeks from last night is the uh, full moon. Okay, we got about two weeks. If it takes it to the, the last great day, the eighth day of Tabernacles, which is our Alul 8, that'll be three weeks. Two or three weeks, maybe. Then the next week, you know, just takes us closer and closer. We've got that big eclipse coming all the way across two massive continents, North and South America. And then the next week's the end of the Feast of Pentecost. So starting in two weeks, and every Friday, Saturday from there are humongous watch nights. You know, because that seventh day, and listen to that Bible reading, guys. Listen to the Bible reading. Download that ebook. Vinyl's put the link up here. Bible codes unsealed. Um, Sean's about to upload that with some more codes if he hadn't already. And uh, just be looking. He wants to get them all out, get them all done. And then the count up to the Omer. This is day 21. Of 50. That means there's only 29 days left to get to the olives. And then you got six days of wood. Today, it overall, is 119 of 153, guys. Getting closer and closer and closer. And please support Sean. He, uh, <laughs> support the guy. I'm telling you, pray for him in support. Give to him. Buy him, buy him some coffee. Buy him a Coke, whatever it is he's drinking. Buy him a burger, pay for his rent, whatever the Lord puts in your heart, and you can do joyfully do that. 
And Vinyl's got his link here, so click on that PayPal me link and help him out. Gareth says, hey, let's go home, man. One day closer. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. And Vinyl says, pray for me. I, Johnny boy, I appreciate you guys praying for me, man. Uh, it really helps. Uh, it's a warfare. If you know anything about warfare, and you've ever gotten up to preach the Bible, you, you got up to preach the Bible, that happens every night. That warfare. Every day, every night, when you are bringing the Word of God. You know what I do every night, guys? I bring you, I bring you the Bible code. That is what Elijah and Moses will be doing in the tribulation, bringing the same Bible code. You don't think the devil hates it now and just as much as we know he's going to hate it then? He does. And so do pastors and Christians and a bunch of people who are supposed to be spirit-filled, spirit-led, stalwarts of their community, pillars of the assembly. Gareth says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking assembling of ourselves together. That's why we assemble every night, man. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and much more as we see the day of Jesus Christ approaching. It says the day of the Lord approaching. That's God's wrath. God's wrath is approaching. It won't approach us. We're going to just miss it. We're going to escape. God's going to call us out on his evacuation plan. Amen. Uh, we are his witness protection. And the true witness protection is Sean and the other guy. God's going to protect them from the wrath that's coming down in the first several days or however long it is. And then they'll be coming back as the witnesses. And they will be the witnesses who had been protected on God's witness protection program. <laughs> And you and I will be in heaven, and boy, woo! Come on down to the Bible room, y'all. Tonight's feature, we're going to see one angel kill 185,000 soldiers. We're going to see God open the windows of heaven and feed some people who never thought they would be ever fed again and blessed by him. We're going to see the leader of that nation go back home with his tail tucked between his legs and watch his two sons murder him tonight. Anybody else want to see that feature in the Bible Code Room? Come on in. Come on in. We got some fresh manna. We're going to deal out to everybody. Bring the kids. Bring everybody. This will be one awesome presentation. Uh, that's how we see the Bible in the plain text when we read that story, isn't it? It's going to be very interesting. Sennacherib was that dude. All right, guys. Tonight is not Tishri 1. I don't care how many slivers of the moon they saw. God says his first day of the month is a full moon. Praise God. A super moon. The fourth super moon, which is coming up in a uh, almost two weeks. It's 13 days. Two weeks from yesterday will be that next full moon, and that'll be a lul one. And God's told us it's going to be an alul rapture. Amen. Praise God. And these guys thinking it's going to happen before then. God's showing them that it won't happen before then. I'm going to show my signs, then the event. The sign comes first, then the event. And that thing that all these guys are talking about, they're calling it the Revelation 12 sign. Sean shared with me last night. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians. He was looking through his mother's Bible, guys. Looking through his mama's Bible. And the Lord just popped this into his spirit. And when he showed me, it popped straight into my spirit. Garish, you're going to love this. 153. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. 153. And not one was lost. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I tell you what, God's good. Let's look at this verse here. We're not seeing the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. Six years ago, on September 23rd, we saw the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. Amen? That was the Revelation 12 sign. Right now, we are seeing the 1 Thessalonians 5-3 sign, the 153 sign. How many of all can get on board with some of that? Let's read what it says. For when they shall say peace and safety, then... Sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. 
Does that sound more like what we're, we see going on and they're, they're all missing? Sean shared that with me. It blew my gourd. I'm like, hello, hello, that's it. 153. 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. Let's read that again. This is not the Revelation 12 sign, what we're seeing right now in Virgo. We're seeing the 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 sign, the 153 sign. Read it again. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. That's what we're watching. Amen? Amen. And praise God for Sean. Praise God for you and I being introduced to Sean and the Lord being so good to put us in his camp, to put us in his praying, uh, his prayer group, praying for him, and his support group. Amen? We, we are a blessed, blessed, blessed people. Gary says, hallelujah, wow. Amen. Wow, smiley face. Amen. Hey, why don't we look over some Bible codes, guys? That's why I came tonight, to read some Bible, to hear some, hear some Bible. Amen? Amen. All right. July 11. July 11. Whoa, a messenger of Belgorod. Ben says, amen, small but blessed group here. Dude. Amen. Amen. That's going to be a real small blessed group there when there's only two in Jerusalem. But power, power, Lila says, amen, power. When, when you got God, dude, you don't need numbers, amen? That's a, that's a good point, brother. Small group, but blessed, amen. We got God. We know what day it is. We know what time it is. We know, we know what day it's not. Gary says, what scripture are they going to, uh, and why? Look for the sliver of the moon. What scripture are they going to, I guess, use? And, and why they look for the sliver of the moon? Yeah. It's Talmudic practice. Judaism. And the Christians have not recognized yet that everything about Judaism is satanic. That's why, Vano says the Talmud. That's why they need... The witnesses to come and say, you guys are all on the wrong page. You're looking at the wrong stuff. Everything you do is backwards. Kabbalah is of the devil. Right? You're going to teach him right. And show him the word. And then show him that psalm passage that Ben showed us last night. The full moon is the, the, full moon is the uh, new moon. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Amen. Yeah, so they have no scripture. We have scripture in the plain text telling us the new moon's the full moon. And we also have the coded text all over the place. And now we got these four super moons. Guys, 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 simple. Well, let's just go to the kindergarten class. For real. Let's go to the kindergarten class. And we're going to have everybody draw. Uh, we're going to give them all four pages of paper. And we want you to draw a full moon at night. But we... Make them a little different. Don't don't put the moon all in one corner. Maybe put the moon in different parts of each of the pages. We'll have four different ones where you can tell when you're giving this to mommy that she can see that it's four different pictures. Four, and those are signs from God. And the first one, God's saying, on your marks. The next one, he's saying, get set. The next one, he says, look up. And that fourth one, he says, go! You reckon a kindergartner could figure that out? Simple. That's how God wants us all to figure out these four moons. They're signals. They're signs. Gary says, that's, that's why I was confused. I understand it now. Amen. Amen, bro. And so th that was our tradition. We were all on that. We were all on board with that because we understood Leviticus 23 came to life. God's seven feasts. And who was the only ones on planet Earth practicing the seven feasts? The Jews. And then we realize, hey, they're practicing them wrong. They're on the wrong date. They're on the wrong calendar. And God has slow mode this thing for us. But we've seen frame by frame by frame. And God clarifying everything. And these Bible codes, Sean Mitchell's heavy study in prayer, God showing him in these Bible codes, what day is what day? What time is what time? Now we know what time it is. Praise God. We learned that last year. 
And so we, since last year, since we learned it, we've been telling them all, come on, guys, you're on the wrong. Bah, bah, I'm going with the Talmud. I'm going with the Babylonians. I'm going with the unbelieving Jews. Okay. But guys, Jesus said there's great deception here at the end. You don't want to be deceived. Ah, bah. Okay. All right, man. And that's why we have this Bible study every night to encourage you and to keep you on track with God's truth, his heart. His heart in the plain text. His, then he expands the plain text. And we get his word within the word. And he calls it my word, my dialect. And he's the one who calls it the Bible code. I didn't know to call it the Bible code till I saw it in the Bible code. My codes, the code, the Bible code. Okay, Lord, we'll, we'll call it that too. People make fun of it. The codes. I see. God's not going to have codes. Well, he's the one that called them that, dude. Okay? You take it up with him. I'm just telling you what he said. See, that's what a true man of God does. The true pastor, he tells you what God said. And we got all these guys in the pulpits tomorrow, tonight, for the Saturday evening service, and then on all the satellite campuses, and then tomorrow we'll have two or three more services, and fervency without God, what a disgusting thing. These pastors today, they're there for the money, and they're there for the pats on the back. And God hates it. He hated that in Jeremiah 23. All the worthless shepherds. God said, I am so sick and tired of these worthless pastors. They have done you wrong, Israel. They've not taught you the truth. They've not taught you to fear me. They don't even know me themselves. And if your pastor is not talking about these four supermoons, because God told you in the very 14th verse of the Bible, okay, 14 days from yesterday, 14 is a big number. That's the rapture number. And on the 14th verse of the entire Bible, God said, I've given you the sun, moon, and stars as signs. And your pastor doesn't even know that the sun, moon, and stars are signs. He doesn't even know they're signaling. Oh, neat. Hey, cool. Mm -hmm. Your pastor probably doesn't even know that they're counting the days in Israel. That that's important to God. The Leviticus 23 thing. Because God told us to count our days. He told us to number our days. Redeem the time for the days are evil. He wants you to know what day it is. And today is not Tishri 1. Radio silence. No trumpets here. <laughs> Crickets. No trumpets. Because it's only... 18 of. You better understand this with the Lord. The new month begins with the full moon. Write some notes and teach your pastor, will you? And you need not join your pastor and those pagans tomorrow who don't even know what time it is. They don't know their God, and he's there representing God. If your pastor was truly representing God, He'd be pre preaching Bible prophecy right now, getting the people prepared for the rapture and the judgment of God. All you people in this congregation, you know what your pastor would do? He would never allow adulterers and fornicators back into his auditorium. But the modern day pastor lets them all in because, you know, they tithe and we got to pay for our family activity center. That basketball goal, do you know how much that cost? Do you really know how much that basketball goal cost? God's a coming with some vengeance, folks. And the first thing he's going to do is destroy all those churches. And he's coming for yours, your building that is called a church when in actuality you're the church. And if your pastor is not preaching what we're preaching here, just general, this is, should be the general subject for how close it is. This is the most talked about subject in the Bible, the day of the Lord. The most talked about. There's no other subject talked more about than this one that we're about to face within two weeks and every Friday, Saturday following. Before, guys, all this is going to happen. This will be 
done and over before October 28th. October 27th is the very last day of Elul. October 21st is the very last day of Pentecost. And Jesus told us he's going to rapture us on Pentecost on the seventh day. It's a Friday, Saturday, as far as we know. Remember that whole progressive revelation thing? If I were to ask you and any basic individual on planet Earth, hey, when's the seventh day of the week? Saturday. Okay. And so when do the Jews start it? And most people would be like, I don't know. But even some of the pastors who don't even know what we're talking about, they know that the evening and the morning were the first day back in Genesis. So they know that Saturday begins on Friday evening at sunset. And there's Deborah and all them at the fig tree. Oh, we saw the moon. We had a sighting. Oh, boy. I hear you, Satan. I hear you, a deceived one, deceiving others. Deborah, you're deceiving everybody, honey. You won't listen to us. That means Deborah. Deborah and her fig tree, she's deceiving everybody because everybody's following because they have official people, trained people looking for the moon. As soon as they see that sliver of the moon come out of the dark moon, that Wikipedia calls the new moon, you can't trust Wikipedia for nothing, folks. They're the devil. That's the devil talking to you. Wikilinks, you better go with God. You better go with God's men. You better go with Sean Mitchell and his Bible code. The truth here at the end of day, so you're not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Hmm. When you hear that, that points us right back to barley, wheat, grapes, olives. Hmm. The harvest. And right now, we are in the middle. We, we are two weeks away from the beginning of the most talked about subject and time frame in the entire Bible over and over and over and over. And your stupid pastor's talking about what? How to get along with your boss at work who's going straight to hell? Foolishness. And he's there because if he preached what we preach here, he wouldn't have a congregation left. Because these folks want to go boating. These folks want to have... Halloween on the 31st, they don't want to be raptured before then on the 27th or the 21st or the 14th or the, or the, the last great day, the 7th, 8th. They want to have Halloween and then they want to have Christmas. They want to celebrate the Antichrist birthday, Nimrod, not Jesus because... Jesus' birthday is what everybody thinks they're serving today, but that is actually about 44 days from now. Okay? Jesus' real birthday, guys, for you that really want to know, is October of this year, October 28th. Do you really want to celebrate Jesus' birthday? Do you really want to worship him? Do you really want to honor him? He was born on Tishri 1, the same day Adam was created. The first of Tishri. Good evening, Nevelyn. Gareth says, also, does it say it takes wisdom to number our days? Gotta have, you got to have God. You got to humble yourself. Uh, the proud, there's no wisdom. To the humble comes wisdom. Nobody who has any wisdom, the true wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning point of wisdom. That means everybody that God kills the night of the rapture is fools. Dead on, straightforward fools, fools, fools. Your family members, your mama, if she refuses Jesus Christ, the free gift of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, your mama's a retard. She's a fool. And so is your grandmama, if she won't believe. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is to honor his word and what his word says about salvation. Honoring his heart, honoring his method, honoring his plan before the foundation of the world because Jesus is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. Amen? Amen. So today is 18 of, not Tishri 1. Radio silence and crickets on that one. No trumpets. 
All right. Hey, let's look at some Bible codes. Uh, Vondo has already put up the link. I believe I remember you seeing you do that, brother. Thank you for that. He's got the link up here. July 11 says this. This is Sean's commentary on it all. Guys, this is what's coming the night of the rapture. Please. When we are raptured, everybody who's not saved, your husband, your wife, your ex-wife, your children who are not saved, your mom and dad who are not saved, they're going to experience this hell. And they'll never be able to wake up out of this, this terrible nightmare. At night, they'll wish it was day. And at day, they'll wish it was night. It is going to be absolutely horrifying, horrific. And it gets worse. Lila says, I'm surrounded by fools. So am I. I praise God for my godly wife. I praise God for Vondo, Teresa, and the kids. And after that, I just ain't got much. But I praise God for that. What a blessing. I am a blessed man to have those people in my life. My physical life. I, I'm blessed to have you all in my life. But man, to, uh, neck huggers. When it comes time to hug some necks, I'm glad to have them. And they're next to hug. I love you. I cannot wait to hug you guys. I wish I could do it on this side. And if the Lord tarries, I may be able to do that. You know, hug, hug a couple of you. And just support you and encourage you and pray with you there in your presence. That would be awesome. All right. So here's this code from July 11. I, I love you. I love you guys. I love every one of you. I love everybody for whom Jesus died. That's human beings. John MacArthur and the Calvinists say, it's not, not all human beings. Jesus only died for the ones who will end up believing. Everybody that's going to hell, he didn't die for those. He created them to go to hell. Now, guys, that's a whole different Jesus he's just described. He just described a demon. And that's who the Calvinists worship. They worship the demon of Geneva, Switzerland, Satan himself. Okay? Get it. Understand it. Remember that CERN is built down there on the Swiss-Franco border. You're Geneva. It's a 17-mile ring, 300 feet down, 100 yards down, right over top of the old Apollo temple, the temple of Apollo. Satan. That's his marching ground. And Geneva, the God of Geneva, is Satan himself. And we're encouraging you to get out of your Calvinism, to get out of your Arminianism. Arminianism is anybody who believes they can lose their salvation. All that Azusa Street crazy bunch doing flips and hollering and talking in demonic tongues. You need to get saved. You need to get saved. No demons are indwelling in any Christian if you're belonging to a church or a group or you just love Isaac, what's his face, or Isaiah, whatever his name is, Sal Zavar, whatever his wicked, foolish self is, who's casting demons out of Christians, that Greg Locke retard casting devils out of Christians, Satanism. There are no demons inside of a Christian who's been bought by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You've been purchased. You're the temple of God. God's temple does not have devils and demons and, you know, images of the Antichrist in them. Those will all be temples of the devil. Okay? All right, here's this code. July 11, Sean gives us his commentary because this is important stuff. The Russian submarine Belgorod K329. That's my number. 923 is my number. That is assigned to me. For six years, I have seven years, I've encouraged everybody to be looking to this sign that happened six years ago, this 23rd of September, 923. And the woman in the sun, the Revelation 12 sign. I wore that shirt every day for seven years. Okay? And so, and because God's positioned me to preach this truth to you now. I've, I've been set up, God's will, His purposes for this time to preach the codes of God on this side of the rapture. That is my job. My job is to point to Sean Mitchell as Elijah, as Moses, and y'all better believe it on this side, and it's a record for everybody on that side that we knew it here. That is my calling. Your calling and election, let's make it sure. We'll follow the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. Here we go. 
Sean's commentary, the Russian submarine Belgorod K-329, officially known as Project 09852. That's also pointing to me. Just, you know, you got that 217 in there. It's my birthday. Oscar class submarine is a special purpose submarine designed for a variety of missions, including intelligence gathering, covert operations, and the deployment of unmanned underwater vehicles. The Poseidon. UUVs. It's one of the largest submarines in the entire world. And we said it was 184 meters. And Vondo told us, uh, that's two football fields, guys. 600 feet. That's a big old boat. The Belgorod submarine features an innovative design that allows it to carry and deploy the Poseidon nuclear-powered unmanned underwater vehicle. It is believed that the submarine is modified to accommodate the Poseidon, making it the first operational submarine capable of carrying this weapon system. It's a doozy, dude. This is that tsunami maker. According to publications by the Russian state news agency TASS, the submarine can carry up to six of these Poseidons at one time. They call it the Poseidon vehicle because that's what it is. It's an unmanned vehicle. Poseidon, also known as the Status 6 Oceanic Multipurpose System, is an autonomous underwater vehicle, AUV, deployed by R Russia. It is unmanned nuclear-powered torpedo-like vehicle designed to operate at extreme depths and carry a nuclear warhead. The primary purpose of the Poseidon is to serve as a strategic deterrent weapon capable of striking enemy coastal areas, naval bases, and aircraft carrier groups and just drowning them. I've seen videos of one that wasn't as powerful as that and when it exploded, that whole aircraft carrier just went up in the air on top of that thing and just went right under the ground, uh, under the water as it hit. Like it was just a toothpick floating on the water. It, they're incredible. And what I saw was the, the version they released to the public. Not this one that's going to shoot a mile high and do God's bidding. These things are incredible. So they can take out a whole aircraft carrier group. Poseidon is, is reported to have a range of several thousand kilometers and the ability to travel at high speeds underwater. It is designed to be highly stealthy and difficult to detect with the capability to an, ev evade anti-submarine defense. It's stealthy, dude. Stealthy, stealthy, stealthy. Once launched, Poseidon can operate autonomously all by itself, making it formidable and unpredictable weapon system. And here is the Bible code by Sean Mitchell, the official code bringer. This is God's word in his dialect. Let's see what that skip is. One thousand. Uh, it's nineteen thousand three forty-seven. So every nineteen thousand three forty-seven, nineteen thousand three forty-seven, nineteen thousand three forty-seven. It says this in red letters: "Woe, a messenger of Belgorod." That sounds like something God would put right inside of his Bible, doesn't it? On perfect skips like this? Let's continue. Here's God's word in his dialect. Woe, a messenger of Belgorod. Moses, Sean Mitchell, shows the ambush in the Torah code of Jehovah for the congregation of Israel. The ambush of New York, USA. You and I see it by faith. Who here knows that this event is going to happen just like this Bible code teaches? Me! Me, we believe it by faith. They won't need faith on their side. When Sean comes back, it'll be a historical event. Now he's just going to describe to them the history, the true history of it. And he's going to have to clean Wikipedia's story up that it was space aliens. He's going to say that wasn't space aliens, folks. You know, New York's missing. You know, the tsunami took him out. You know, the aliens showed up that night, but they're not aliens. Let me show you some other Bible codes that prove what I'm saying. And he'll be down there showing them. Bible codes. Amen? And we believe by faith on this side, and they'll believe by historical fact on that side. And he'll just straighten out the details, and many will be following along in the Bible code because of these amazing skips. Okay? The ambush of New York, USA. She will be shot with a flood. These torpedoes being shot 
from a submarine. That's where they, they were deployed and they're, they found their locations and they're ready to do their thing. She'll be shot with a flood. The USA shook. I mean, this thing rattled, earthquaked, went dark, got black. God says the night of the rapture, he's going to bring darkness. Now, I don't know what that means. But I know when God brings a darkness, folks ain't going to be able to see through it. He can cover up that full moon if he decides to attack and to rapture us on the night of that fourth full moon as a sign to the Jews. He can do that and have a cloudy night. Nobody will see it. But whichever night it is, it'll be the rapture night. We know that exactly sure. What hour it'll be, it'll be the rapture hour. That's when he's going to rapture us. And it'll be black. And it'll be terrible. And the whole USA will shake. But Jesus is the shield. Don't you want to be shielded? Don't you want to be safe? Be saved today, guys. All you got to do is believe in the finished work of Jesus. Your pride will get you killed. Your humility will get you shielded. Killed or a shield? Which is it? What are you going to do? Uh, humble myself, humble myself. To, uh, Lord, I humble myself, whatever. Whatever you want, that's what I want. That's what God's looking for. Final says the majority of power plants are located on the East Coast. That's going to be a bad night, guys. You talk about going black. No electricity for the rest of your death. Till your death, famine comes midi. Oh, dude, that reminds me. Sean shared something with me, guys, right here. The very day of that full moon, the very, you know, the 29th, 929, the United Nations is going to have a big get-together about famine, reducing food loss and waste, taking action to transform food systems. This is www.un.org. It's called the International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste Reduction, 29 September. Because it's all coming. And that flood of God, via the Belgorod, via the Poseidon nuke, via the Russians, blamed on the aliens, that's going to kill all the power plants. That's going to drown all the food. All the food in these storage bins. My wife and I took a little drive today out in the country. And these humongous storage bins, just bigger and bigger, building bigger barns. Oh, party soul. And God says, you fool, tonight your soul will be required of you, you stupid farmers who just loved GMO and the money that came with it. And you hated my style. You hated my seed, God says. You hated what I created because you wanted more money. And boy, are these guys millionaires. God's going to kill all their barns, the beans, the wheat, the rice, the cotton. Cotton ain't no good when it's wet and rotten, folks. Cotton can't be rotten and be sold and made a lot of money on. And those bins are going to be destroyed and all that GMO seed on the ground. And it won't produce. It won't reproduce because it's GMO by design. And these power plants are going to go dark. And there's going to be a famine in the land immediately. Those who survive won't survive long. And they won't survive happy and joyful. USA, you're going to have it bad. We are calling out as prophets on this side. What does a prophet do? We tell you what God said. We bring forth the word of God. Here's what God said. Thus saith the Lord. And the Bible code is God's word in his dialect, and he's thus saying, and he's telling you it's going to be bad. And Vondo has shared the information with us. All those nuclear plants were built on the East Coast on purpose, knowing they, the United Nations, Barack Obama, was going to destroy the East Coast with a water event, just like Fukushima. Fukushima was one little town, one little power plant, and it has caused all of this trouble. And now here comes some more. So that is the 29th of September, International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste Reduction. Getting back to our Bible code. The Bible verse here in, in the text going across is Deuteronomy 34.10. And there arose not a prophet since like that, uh, like, like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Then I abode in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. 
And Sean has another note. He says the ELS reference 19347 characters between rows. There's 17 displayed terms in the matrix. The matrix starts at numbers 22, 35, and the 36th character and ends at Deuteronomy 12, 3, and the 53rd character. The matrix spans 348,269 characters of the surface text. So that's how many characters are on the surface text. And, you know, going all the way across the straight line. All the way across the straight line, then you got your skip, 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 skips. And that's how many is totally involved. And then he cuts, he crops the portion out that is vital, the code table itself. And that's what we call the table, the, the, sh the shaded gray area. It's 20 hours. Hey, it's 20 hours. It's 8 o'clock. The matrix has 19 rows, 50 columns wide, and contains a total of 950 characters. There are nine significant terms in this matrix. The matrix odds are one chance in 9.170249999, and it goes on forever. In favor of significance, the cumulative R factor is 19.962926. Hmm. That comes up just, just, just before 929. God wants us to have our heads up. Starting the, the 23rd, guys, starting the 23rd with this sign in the heavens, this 153 sign, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 sign, not the Revelation 12 sign. Sean was so on with this thing, man. God brought that to his heart. Through looking at his mama's Bible. Don't you love it? Don't you love how God rolls, man? I do. I love the truth he brings us. Let's look at God's word in his dialect. We'll go to the next one. God says this. Whoa, that's warning. That's judgment. That is death coming. It, it, bad, everything bad is in this word. Whoa, a messenger of Belgorod. Moses, Sean Mitchell shows the ambush in the Torah code of Jehovah for the congregation of Israel. The ambush of New York, USA, she will be shot with a flood. The USA shook, surged. Jesus is your only shield. Yeshua is the shield. Amen. All right, let's look at another one. This is July 12. July 12, Sean Christopher Mitchell, Elijah Moses. Sean says, this Torah code contains my full name and birthday. The table size is 67 by 18. And what did we see there? We see 718. Right on. 718 is his birthday, July 18. Equals 1206. And which totals 9, which is a judgment number, okay? And here is the code by Sean Mitchell, God's word in his dialect. The birthday of Sean Christopher Mitchell. God puts it in the numbers here, guys. God is wanting these people in the tribulation to know that this is their guy and they can believe him. They need to trust him. They need to listen to his every word. So do you think you might need to do that here too on this side? I'm thinking you do. We are a, ch we are a church and the only the just shall live by faith, and we are the most faithless, faithful bunch ever. We're saved. You believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, but you don't believe much after that. That's proven in the numbers that come our way who see this, who won't even watch it all the way through. It's like, oh, it's them again. Click it off. The birthday of Sean Christopher Mitchell Moses. I mean, God uses his whole name here. Moses Elijah is July. Right guy. We got the right guy here. Your corn and your new wine and your fresh oil. That kind of sounds like Pentecost, don't it? To me. Your corn, that's the, that's the barley and the wheat. That's the corn. Uh, your new wine, that's the grapes. And your fresh oil, that's the olive trees. God continues. The olive tree of Jehovah will do signs. He's going to be doing some amazing, mind-blowing signs like Grandpappy Moses did. The Code of Jehovah. Now, that is an amazing sign right there. The wonder words. The wonder skips. Um, whatever. That is done by the people who don't even like the plain text. 
with the people who love and crave the plain text. My soul hungers and thirsts after your word, Lord. They love the coded text. Very few folks on planet Earth alive at this time that do that. Leviticus 23. This is God's chapter where he sets up his time frame for all of existence. Man's existence, the 7,000 years. And when you reap, when you harvest the harvest of your land, you shall not make clean riddance of the entire field. You got to leave the corners of the fields, leave, leave them there because it would feed the travelers and the poor, the naked, the miserable, the blind, the orphans, and the widows because they couldn't plant crops. They were so poor, but if they left the corners of their fields, they could come by and make them a little bread once in a while, keep them from starving to death. Don't get rid of the corners of your fields when you reap, neither shall you gather any gleanings of your harvest. Leviticus 9.17. Nine is, you know, could be our month that we're in. It, it refers to judgment. Nine is judgment. And then 17 is victory. And it's also the enemy, Barack Obama. It's his time of judgment. So we got 917. That is when God officially makes Obama the judgment. Okay? And Leviticus is the third book of the Bible which pictures God, the Trinity, being yoked with him or yoked with Obama, the judgment time. And it says, And he brought the meat offering and took a handful thereof, and he burned it upon the altar beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. And Jesus Christ is our burnt offering. Jesus Christ. And Sean will be preaching Jesus Christ to these people versus Obama. And Obama's going to hate Sean's message, his story of Jesus Christ, of the great harvester, the one who harvested the souls at the same time Belgorod and the Poseidon nukes were doing their thing. For Obama's bidding, he wanted to kill us all, and God saved us all, all of us believers, in the finished work of Jesus Christ. The dead in Christ rise first, and we which are alive and still living, we're caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And Obama hates that. He hates hearing Sean preach about the harvest. And then Sean will be back here. He will be the corners, the four corners, feeding the people. They're going to be poor, naked, miserable, tired, wore out, orphans. You're going to have your 14-year-old orphans, 15-year-old orphans. And then right after that, the babies will start coming about nine months later. and Many of them will become orphans and many of them will be killed. It's going to be the worst time ever. God's going to bring some darkness. And he brought the meat offering and took a handful thereof, and he burned it up on the altar beside the burnt sacrifice of the morning. Jesus was our ultimate burnt sacrifice, and he took our sins for us, and Sean will be proclaiming that Yeshua is the way of salvation. He is our refuge. He is our only way. Jesus is the cities of refuge. Amen. Let's read God's word here again. The birthday of Sean Christopher Mitchell, Moses, Elijah, is July. Your corn and your new wine and your fresh oil. The olive tree of Jehovah will do signs. The code of Jehovah. Yeshua, cities of refuge. Jesus is your safety. Listen to Sean Mitchell and he'll tell you where to go next. Just do what he says. He is the Lord's voice. There's no mistake. We as humans on this side, we can make mistakes. But when Sean comes back on that side, there will be zero mistakes. For he will be glorified and he will be the absolute spirit and voice of God. And this Bible code, there's no mistakes there. You can trust every word of it and read it and familiarize yourself with it. Amen? Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. We say that now. Place your faith in his finished work and be saved today. He is your city of refuge. He will bring you into his wonderful golden city of refuge at the rapture, if you'll believe, and save yourself from all of this terrible turmoil that's headed our way. Let's look at another one. This is July 13. Whoa, Elijah strikes, and he preaches the seven thunders. July 13. 
Sean's commentary. He says, Barack Obama will set up his idol in the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem in the year 5786. And guys, that gives us all these time frames. Okay? That's why we know the rapture is now. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Because he's going to set his image up at the halfway point of the tribulation. And the halfway point, according to this Bible code, is 5786. And right now, we're in 5783. Three and a half years from now is 5786. Okay? And all the kings of the earth who acknowledge his foreign god, Barak's foreign god, which is an image of himself, Nobody has ever worshipped a God like this until he sets it up. You're going to worship me, y'all. And all his friends come in and they say, we're in. Let's worship him. Let's worship that image. They will increase in joy. Everybody who worships it are going to be promised increase in joy. And all of his friends, the ten kings, the ten leaders, and everybody else in the United Nations, they will follow along. They'll worship this beast. They'll get the mark of the beast. And they will increase in goods and all. Oh, it'll be so great for them. And then it says he will ambush and kill the two witnesses in the streets of Jerusalem during this time. So Barack Obama gets killed. He loses his eye, the power of his right arm, and then Satan enters him. He raises from the dead the people. Ooh, ah, ooh, oh. Meanwhile, Sean and the other guys out there are saying, don't believe this crap. Don't believe these lies. Don't believe this stuff. Yeah, the, the, George says the seven kings, because three have bailed out, and they're quickly subdued. Amen. Um, so he will ambush and kill the two witnesses in the streets after this. So after they ooh and ah, he'll go into the temple. He sets up an image of himself. He declares himself to be God. He declares there's no Jehovah. Well, he does that at the night of the rapture. Okay? He does that the night of the rapture. Uh, there is no God. This was the aliens. This wasn't Jesus. This wasn't a rapture. Come on, guys. Okay, He'll be pointing back to that, and he'll continue that same message while Sean's saying, yes, there is. Jehovah's the king, and you better get into him. He's your city of refuge. He will protect you. He will keep you from harm. Amen? Yeah. George says three will be killed. That's being subdued under his feet. You're dead to me. They're quickly subdued, and those countries or the entities that they lead will quickly still be under Barack Obama. Amen. Good point, brother. So after Obama does all this stuff, then he comes out. He has the power to kill and ambush Sean and the other guy. I mean, it's a bloody, tore up, thrashing mess. And they lay dead in the street for three and a half days. And that's what we see here. We see that he... Barack Obama will ambush and kill the two witnesses in the streets of Jerusalem during this time. But God will raise them from the dead. He, and instead of everybody going, ooh, ah, they're going to be freaked out. Including Barack Obama and his king friends and all the United Nations and everybody who's worshipped the beast. Because Sean and the other guy will ascend to heaven and it's going to outdo the resurrection that just happened earlier with Barack Obama. Barack Obama thought he had killed these guys, killed them off, you know, just like those other three kings. He thought he had killed these guys off just like that, and they would stay dead, but they didn't. And they ascend to heaven, and it's going to be shocking. He, God says, hey, Barack, why you need to shut up. He's going to silence him. We saw that in a, in a code a couple days ago. Silence. God says, silence. And he shuts them all up. They're all, they look at, y'all seen that meme of that little baby orangutan? That's how they're all going to be looking when they see him ascend. Shut up, quiet, and they're going to be stunned and shocked out of their diapers. But God will raise them from the dead three and a half days later to the shock of the enemies. And then he has a note here. He says, the Hebrew gematria of Sean Mitchell, his name Sean Mitchell, when they look at those letters are 331. And the English is 726. 726 is harpazo, rapture, okay? Mentioned 14 times in the Greek New Testament. Our English Bible, King James, comes from that testament, the Textus Receptus, okay? And what's, why does he mention that? Because when you look at this ELS in this code that Vondo has put up, click on that link, you will see that the ELS is 331, 521. 
three, three, one, all of them, all the major uh, phrases. This phrase is three, three, one. Whoa, Elijah strikes and he preaches the seven thunders. He judges with death. Another one, three, three, one is death. Three, three, one, Babylon. Three, three, one, Barak and the idol. Three, three, one, the ambush. Three, three, one, Obama. Three, three, one, the God of his friends was, you know, I can't even read that small print. Barack killed them and uh, in the book of Jehovah. All at the 331, all at Sean, 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 Sean Mitchell, Sean Mitchell, Sean Mitchell, Sean Mitchell, Sean Mitchell. So it's 331 and also 726. So when we see those numbers, when the Jews see those numbers, they're going to say Sean Mitchell, Sean Mitchell. That's because that's the numbers, the Hebrew and the English gematria. And here's the verse, Isaiah 28, 15 and 16. Because you've said, we have made a covenant with death. And Israel has made a covenant with death. When they made a covenant with Barack Obama, they were sealing their death certificate. They were signing it. Because what he's going to do, he's going to woozy and schmoozy, get everybody back to Israel. Come on, Ethiopia. Come on, you Russians. We're one world now. You don't have borders. We don't have borders. Come on, all you from America. Come on in, Jews. We're going to separate the land. There will be a Palestinian side, and there will be an Israeli side. Y'all come in, and we're going to live in peace. And he's just bringing the people in so he can just have one place to kill them. Have you noticed your Walmart changing and being remodeled lately? It's going to be a kill zone, a kill site. It's going to be a concentration camp, a FEMA camp. And so he's calling all the people in, and when they say, yes, let's agree with this, oh, Obama's our guy, they're making a covenant with death, their own death. Okay, He is death personified, and he's going to kill them. That's what they're making a covenant with. And Isaiah talks about this. We have made a covenant with death, and with hell, we, we are at agreement. With an overflowing scourge shall pass through. It shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. We're safe with Obama. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, Jesus. A sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. He that believeth will trust in the Lord and be safe. Let's look at Daniel eleven thirty five 35 to 39. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even unto the time of the end. Because it is yet for a time appointed and the king shall do according to his will. Barack Obama. He's going to do whatever he wants. He's going to exalt himself and magnify himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, which is Jehovah, Jesus Christ, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. He will not show regard for the gods of his fathers, the God longed for by women, Ashtaroth and the female deities, Wonder Woman, okay, they're setting all them up now. This whole thing has been a setup. This woman empowerment. And look, this woman owns this company. Every time you look at The View and every time you look at Good Morning America, they've got some successful woman. And that's what they're doing in opposition to God. And she got where she is without prayer, without God's help, without... God's about to kill all of them. All them CEOs get to go to hell with their companies. You know, that night of the nuke. And those years at following. And so it's... Obama is not going to follow the God of his fathers or the God of his mama. He is his God, and you're going to have to, you know, comply. You're going to have to start hating your gods and just love me only, or I'm going to cut your head off. I'll kill you. That's going to be his philosophy. That's what he'll be preaching. He will not show regard for the God of his fathers, the God longed for by women, nor any other God, because he will magnify himself above all. But in his estate, he shall honor the God of forces, Satan, inside of him. Okay, Satan inside of the image. Whatever AI is animating that image, the God of forces, Satanism. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold. All the fathers, they worshiped gods that they carved out of their hands. Known gods, Molech, Baal, Ashtaroth. But he's going to do away with all of them, all the Freemason gods, and it's going to be him alone, guys. And you, you got everybody in? It's me or, you know, death. 
You made a covenant with death here, and I'll kill you if you don't worship me. But I'll bless you really big if you do. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's worship him. And that blessing just is short-lived. Especially when that hot sun comes out and fries everybody's chips. And they start getting boils on their bodies. Double-crossed. Rich men in just writhing pain. Terrible pain. Pain they can't get rid of. You know, and then you got the stinging scorpions and good night, folks. Trust Jesus today and be saved from all of this. Amen? Amen. But in his estate, he's going to honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers didn't know, and he's going to honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with the strange God. Satan, Lucifer himself, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide his land for gain. If you worship me and the devil, you'll be blessed. And then finally, Revelation 10, 2 to 11. And he hath in his hand a little book. This is this big old angel. Devon says, God says, Sean will know the day and the hour. Does it points to the oil, and I believe it. I'm fully persuaded this is the Elijah who is sent before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, Maranatha King Jesus. Amen. Me too, bro. Here's that Revelation 10 passage. And he had in his hand a little book, and he set his right foot on the sea, his left foot on earth, and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. You have six of those at your disposal in your hands, guys. If you'll download this link, you'll have six of the seven thunders in your hand. And you can see them with your eyes and you can get them from your eye gate to your heart gate, right into your heart. Believe, 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 believe what you got here. This is what happened in Revelation 10, this little book that you have in your hand. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write... And I heard a voice, this is John talking, and I heard a voice saying unto me, don't write, leave them sealed up. The seven thunders have uttered, don't write them, write them not. And here's the code by Sean Mitchell, the only guy that can unseal those thunders. Qualified by God, called by God, anointed by God with this oil. Code by Sean Mitchell, God's word in his dialect. Whoa, Elijah strikes. So when Sean comes back, He's going to have the full glory of God in him. He's going to have the mind of Christ Jesus in him. This word will be all in him, all seven thunders. And he's got 2,300 plus codes that he has in his heart now. He's going to be preaching them and they're going to be power. And when he speaks them, it's going to be fire out of his mouth. And if there's any opposition against him, those people are going to die at the fire, the word of the Lord. Okay? That's just the setup for what we're about to read. Whoa, Elijah strikes. And he preaches the seven thunders. When you preach these seven thunders, like I do here nightly, people don't like that. They oppose that. They hate it. They'll leave your Bible study when they were there for 10 years. This year, this weekend, was, was our 11-year anniversary of rekindling our Bible study here. I had gone away for the, to the biker church for three years and then came back here and started Fault Line Bible study. People came for 10 years till we started preaching the seven thunders. And then they split. And just before that, Vondo came back. When I, when I went to the biker church, they went to another church here in town, started attending, seeing the kids raised in the children's apartments and everything, the blessings there. And then they came back just before I started preaching these seven thunders. And they remained when everybody else blew it off and quit and hated the seven thunders. They don't appreciate, they don't understand the seven thunders in the mouth of Elijah. Sean Mitchell, the heart of Elijah, bringing us God's word. Sean's going to be preaching the very same thing that I preach to you every night. And it's going to be devastating to folks. There will be folks dying from it. There will be folks blessed incredibly from it. And that pictures you folks who are blessed by the Bible code every night. When you hear it, it encourages your heart. It challenges you. It gives you new truths that you hadn't contemplated. And you believe. And you're blessed in that. Whoa, Elijah strikes and he preaches the seven thunders. 
He judges with death. The word of God. Life and death, man. That's what God said. I, I present to you today life and death. You better choose life. You better believe. To deny, to not believe, is that's, you've chosen death. You made a covenant with death, just like these people will here in, with Barack Obama. He judges with death. The God of his friends was honored, Barack Obama. You see, Elijah judges with death, and Barack Obama will be doing the same thing in opposition. They'll be killing two different people's groups. Sean will be killing devils, and the devil will be killing Christians. The saints, people who won't worship his little beast. The God of his friends was honored. He was honored by his friends to be God. That's the, Barack was worshipped as God. And okay, well, thanks, guys. I'll let you live and I'll bless you real big. Keep, keep that up. Tell your folks, tell your friends and family. Tell them all about it. And so for this reason, Barack Obama kills Elijah and the other guy and anybody else who won't believe, okay? But he's not able to kill Sean and the other guy until the mid-trib point. He'll be killing a lot of folks, but all this happens at the mid-trib point when he sets up that idol in the temple, declares himself to be God, animates it. So Barak killed them. They are a hook of Jehovah. They're bait. Remember that Barack Obama, when you're reading Revelation, he and his army are headed off and they locate where God has hidden Israel. Boom. And then there's a hook put in their jaw. Now, we know that th that is also referring to the end when Jesus Christ comes back. Because God wants them all in a special location when he comes back to kill them. So he puts a hook in their jaw, Gog and Magog. Well, Sean and the other guy are also bait for Barack Obama to keep him at bay, to keep him where God wants him to be. Okay, And so when he comes out, he's a gimp, he's missing an eyeball, his arm is all shriveled up, and he's being worshipped, and there's Sean and the other guy, Elijah and Moses, and they're bait, I want them dead, I want them dead, and finally he's able, by God's grace, letting down the shields, letting down the barriers, letting down the glory, allows them to be killed, okay? And so Barack's a killer, he killed them, they are a hook of Jehovah, Barack Obama killed them with an ambush, Moses and Elijah. His friends were honored, but everybody that worshipped him was blessed. Barack's false covenant with death and the kings of Babylon. Babylon is Barack and the idol. They accepted the silver, the money from the people. Come on in. We'll take it. We'll make it the, these wonderful idols with your silver and gold. Idols of me. Little Barack Obama's in your house. Remember, God gave us the story of little Micah. And he was a personal king of, for uh, Jonathan. I, I'm trying to picture this, remember the story. And then the Ephraimites come in and say, hey man, it's better for you to be the priest of a bunch of folks than just of a little folks. Why don't you come on in and we'll turn that little silver of yours into idols, man. And Barack Obama is going to love the idea. And remember, they're going to be throwing their gold and silver in the streets. It'll be worthless because you got to get the mark of the beast. Okay? So he's going to be accepting all these people's monies and their blessings and come out. He's going to get richer and richer and richer. Isaiah 45, 22 and 23. Look unto me, Jesus says, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I'm God, and there's none else. I've sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee will bow and every tongue will swear. And these guys, Moses, and them will be preaching that. Guys, come on, do not bow the knee to this guy. Bow it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Be saved, because Jesus Christ is going to be coming in three and a half years to kill Barack Obama and everybody who has this mark. Look to Jesus, bow your knee to him and be saved. Don't bow to this Barack Obama. Ezekiel 18, 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions, thereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? That's what Sean will be preaching. He'll be preaching this. Don't follow that guy. Follow Jesus. Bow to Jesus. If you're going to bow the knee, do it to the Lord Jesus. Psalm 77. Now that's the year that Sean was born. 19 Psalms, 77, 1977. 
1 to 3. And this is written to the chief musician of Jeduthun, a psalm of Asaph. Oh, I cried unto my God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night, and it didn't stop. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. They will be longing and wishing they had been raptured, that they had turned to their Jesus way before, and their souls will hurt, and they'll be counting the days like we are, counting in joy like we are. It's lesser today than it was yesterday. It's lesser tomorrow than it would have been today. Joy, joy, joy in the count. And they'll be looking to see Jesus. Are you looking to see Jesus? Or are you looking to, you know, to be safe? Be, have your heart. Pray, Lord, have my desire in this whole rapture thing to be Jesus. To be with Jesus. To be safe with him. To be in his arms. To look into his wonderful face. To thank him for saving me and making it possible just by believing, Lord God. Make that my heart. Loving him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And loving my neighbor as myself. Amen. Amen. I think that's good. Let's read God's Word in His dialect again. Code by Sean Mitchell and God's Word in His dialect. Woe, Elijah strikes and he preaches seven thunders. <laughs> I wish the people would understand what's happening in this little Bible study every night. The seven thunders are being ripped here every night to a chosen few who have chosen. He judges with death. The God of his friends was honored, so Barack killed them. They're a hook for Jehovah, of Jehovah. Barack Obama killed them with an ambush. His friends were honored. Barack's false covenant with death and the king of Babylon. Babylon is Barack and the idol. They accepted the silver money from the people. Just like the preachers tomorrow. Bring your silver and gold. Crefto dollar. I love money! Spirit of Antichrist, we love Jesus and Him crucified. And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus says, I know because you read my word every day. I know you love me when you love my word. That's what Jesus said in the Bible. That's why we encourage you to read the Word and love it. Love the Word. You're loving Jesus. He's the Word made flesh. Amen. Pray for Sean. Pray for one another. We are under two weeks now to the full moon, to that fourth light, to the fourth supermoon, God's fourth sign in the heavens during Pentecost. Meanwhile, we've got Virgo, the woman in heaven, which is not the Revelation 12 sign. It's the 1 Thessalonians 5.3 sign. Hallelujah. Vondo, can you put 1 Thessalonians 5.3 up here for us, please? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you for these seven thunders being thundered every night. Thank you every, every time that you put it on Sean's heart to... Produce another one for us. We love these thunders. We love the sound of your voice from heaven. We love the sound of your voice in your own dialect. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. We are so blessed. We are so, so blessed to have your thunders. We praise you for them. And we just pray that other people will be awakened to it, Lord. There's got to be people out there who's praying for truth. I pray you'll direct them this way and bless them. In all of this, bless Sean. Bless his workings. Bless his thoughts. Bless his heart, bless his health, and just give him joy unspeakable and full of glory in these days ahead. And for all of us, Lord, everybody who's part of this Bible study and part of the thunder gathering. And I, I pray that uh, we'll just be blessed. Our, our health will be getting better and better and better till we see you. And we're excited about seeing you. We just praise your name. We glorify you in the name of Jesus, Papa. Amen. Amen. Hey, Vondel's got it here. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 in the KJV. For when they shall say peace and safety, that's happening now. The United Nations is having their big stuff, big get-togethers. For when they shall say peace and safety, 
then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That's what we're seeing in heaven. Thank you, Brother Sean, for that insight. What a blessing. Miss Evelyn says, Amen, Ben. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a great night, y'all. Brother George says, Amen. Amen, guys. I love you all dearly. God bless you, and by His grace, we'll see you in the morning from the Vondrins.